Good morning. Whoa. Sorry about that. Turn me down, Phil. Uh, don't turn me off. Just turn me down a little bit. Uh, thank you for being here today. This uh, third Sunday in Advent, uh, Sunday that we emphasize joy, and I hope that it will be a joyful experience as you come to worship today. As you came in this morning, you should have received a bulletin that has our order of worship uh, to help you through the service. It also has lots of of announcements. There's many, many meetings and uh, opportunities for service coming up this particular time of the year, and I encourage you to, to work your way through uh, the bulletin and uh, to take note of the things coming up. Some of these are for senior adults, some are for our youth, and uh, some of them relate to all of us. Um, you'll re be reminded that we're receiving our world missions offering, and we encourage you to, to give generously to that. Um, some things that aren't in the uh, announcements, I want to um, uh, make sure and highlight. Uh, I think everyone has heard by now that Beth Parker's father passed away earlier in the week, and uh, we certainly mourn with her and are praying for the, the Cox family. Uh, the family requested in lieu of flowers that uh, contributions be given to Carson Newman College for a scholarship fund. And so at each of the entrances, we have little sheets. If that's something you'd like to uh, participate in, you can uh, pick up one of these little slips, and uh, that would be a very nice gesture on your part, uh, supporting Beth and her family uh, during this time of grief. So please note that. This past Wednesday night, we were not able to have our children's and youth musicals uh, due to uh, Beth's father's death. And uh, uh, we're hoping we're going to still get that in before Christmas. But uh, one of the things that affected was our birthday party for Jesus. We didn't have near the crowd that we normally would uh, because of those cancellations. And we need still more gifts uh, for the needy children uh, that we give to CCM. So if you've not done that yet, if you'll get those to us by in the morning, it sure would be helpful. And I know the folks at CCM would uh, would appreciate it as well. So if you uh, weren't here Wednesday, have not had a chance to participate in that ministry, we, we would like for you to do that. Uh, I know some of you participated in a ministry yesterday, uh, ringing the bells for the Salvation Army. So if your arms are sore because you rang yesterday and can raise them, let's see who, who rang bells. Okay, I see several hands throughout. Good job. And it was not just men this time. We got some women involved, and they probably raised more money than the men would be my guess. But uh, anyway, thank you all for, for helping uh, very much. Um, not sure of anything else. The, the food drive, we're, we're wrapping things up there, and uh, I think it looked like we were in pretty good shape. We may be short on still a few things. I'm uh, trying to find somebody who would know. Is there anything in particular that we still got to have? Beans? Green beans? We are convinced that somebody's been stealing the green beans. We had a whole bunch, and now they're not here anymore. So if you've been taking the green beans, would you please bring them back? Okay. Um, this Wednesday night is our night to gather to assemble the baskets. This coming Saturday morning, we'll be delivering them. I hope you'll be here Wednesday night to help, but if you uh, maybe haven't brought some items and could still do that, uh, we, we you know, have a certain amount that we need for green beans and for corn and, and the, you know, the meal and the oatmeal and all those sort of things. So, so please help us out. It's a wonderful ministry. But we'll be dried beans. dried beans, that's what we need. Oh, so they brought back the green beans? <laughs> okay. Okay, never mind on the green beans. We need dried beans. The, that was the thing, I think, for, for today. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, they're gonna, men are going to count, and the women may want to help them. Um, and if you'll call the church, if you're wanting to um, know specifically what we're lacking, we'll be able to tell you. Then you can rush on down here before Wednesday with the make up the difference. 
uh, just a great ministry and many of you have already with the shoe boxes and so many other things that have been ministering. Thank you so much. It, it is exciting to be part of a church that is reaching out, that cares, and I appreciate that very much. You probably noticed if you've been downstairs that the offering envelopes are ready for 2006. And if you haven't gotten yours, I hope you'll, you'll pick those up sometime real soon. You, you'll find an insert this morning in your bulletin uh, related to one of our um, denomination affiliations with the missions offering and I hope you'll take a, a look at that so good to have you here and I, again it's the day to celebrate joy it's uh, Advent's a time partly a penitence uh, of, uh, of being oh excuse me oh yes okay I'll get to that in a minute um, but it's also supposed to be you know part of it's this time of joy it's the celebration and that's what we're going to do today the songs have all been picked to do that and Betty would celebrate if some of you would sign up uh, for the live nativity scene. We, we, we're doing pretty good, but on the next Monday night from 8 to 9, we have nobody signed up. And, and that's, you know, the little baby Jesus is going to be awful lonesome out there. Uh, so we need some more people to sign up. We've done well for next Sunday night. We've done well for next Tuesday night. We've got most of the first slot filled for Monday night, but nobody for the second half uh, next Monday night. So Betty's got the list. Uh, please see her either during the fellowship hymn or at the end of the service or just call her later today. But um, most of you have heard the live animal, animals are back by popular demand. It's going to be a great year. We just need need some more people. So if you can help us, please do so. Well, if you're guest, a guest with us today, I forgot we're doing that at the first part of the service too. Uh, we're, please know we're glad you're here. I know some are joining us by television. We welcome you as well. If you are our guest today for the first time, inside your bulletin there's a little place that uh, you can fill out some information about uh, who you are. And we'd appreciate it if you would fill that out and return it later in the offering plate so that we can have a record of your visits. It's good to have all of you here. Let's celebrate the joy of Christmas this morning. <coughs> Let us all stand and sing our call to worship this morning. Verse 2 of Good Christian Men Rejoice. It's number 96 in your hymnal. Please stand as we sing. <laughs> with our hymn of praise, number 88, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you thinking about joy, joy of your creation, joy of your faithfulness, joy of, of knowing you and finding that peace in you, the joy of knowing that you will comfort us when we are hurting, the joy of knowing that we are one with you when we try to be your friend. Now, Father, as we try to complete that joy through worshiping you today, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Can I have all the children for the children's sermon? Good morning. What are some of your favorite things about Christmas? What do you guys like the most? Do you know? What? Presents. Presents. Anything else? I like the lights and, of course, the gifts. And there's always lots of food, right? Do you guys like the food? Do you get lots of cookies, candy? <laughs> And we get to spend time with our families. There's lots of good things about Christmas, but sometimes we get caught up in all those good things and we forget about what Christmas is all about. And some of you guys were here Wednesday night, but Wednesday night we had a birthday party for Jesus. And so that's why we celebrate Christmas. And so you guys in extended session are going to talk about the story out of Luke, the story about Jesus and how an angel came and told Mary that she was going to give birth to the Savior. And then when she was about to have the baby, they traveled all the way to Bethlehem. And then when they got there, there was no room for them in the inn. And so they had to go out to where they kept the animals. And out there, they put Jesus once he was born in a manger. And so you guys are going to hear more about that story today, okay? Let's pray to God and thank him for his son. God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this story of your son, and thank you for sending your son to us. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll ask the children to stay here with us just a moment and ask the Branscombe family to come now to the lighting of our Advent wreath. We have lit in weeks past uh, the candles that represent hope, that represent peace. Today we light the candle of joy. The candle of joy is different from the others. It is pink, and uh, it's just a day, a reminder that today is different in Advent. I ask you to join me in reading the pink sheet that you'll find as a part of your bulletin. Let's read together. Why light a candle that will burn out? The message of this candle cannot be quenched. It speaks of joy, deep as the human soul. Joy, profound as the truth of Scripture. Joy, rich as the promises of God. It signifies the advent joy of the heavenly host, heralding the newborn king. The third advent candle denotes joy, not passing happiness, not fleeting laughter, nor blind optimism, but the joy of God in our hearts. Here glows a light for joy. You see a candle of joy burning. What is your response? God took great joy in creation and saw that it was very good. God takes joy in us and longs for our fellowship. The joy of God is mediated to us through faith in Jesus Christ. We celebrate anew the coming of the Messiah. Behold the boundless joy of our Lord. Thank you, Branscombe family, very much, and thank you, children. Jenny Woods, in just a moment, is going to be coming to share with us our missions moment. We also have some children who are going to be presenting some loaves of bread. If you were here last week, you know that each week for every $500 you give to our world missions offering, a loaf of bread will be presented. And this week, uh, we have three loaves, meaning that we have received at least $1,500 thus far. Our goal is $6,000. So we're hoping before the season is over, we'll have 12, is it 12? Is that right? 
We have 12 loaves of bread. And uh, so thank you, kids, for reminding us today where we are. And we look forward to filling the whole front section with bread in the weeks to come. Jenny, come share with us. Whether you call them Romani or Gypsy, the people group that Ralph and Tammy Stocks live and work among in Hungary and Romania have a great need for Jesus Christ. Tammy writes, I think God is changing lives among the Gypsy people. The Gypsies face great discrimination and prejudice in Eastern Europe, and when they realize that a God out there loves them, and loves them because they are Gypsy, because of who they are, it's a wonderful thing. It's a life-changing moment for them, and they embrace that. As we see one person come to know the Lord, Tammy says it's like it spreads, and they want to share it with others, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We can all make a difference in the lives of the gypsy people as we give our mission offering this season and also as we pray for them. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we ask that you help us bring new life, new hope, new dreams to the gypsy people and to all people who do not yet know you. We have heard your call to bring the bread of life to one and all. Help us to be generous in our giving. In Christ's name, amen. All right, thank you, kids. Thank you, Jenny. Our fellowship hymn this morning is number 89, O Come All Ye Faithful. Uh, before we sing, we're going to ask you to stand and to greet those around you. Uh, and then in just a few moments, Suzanne will come and lead us in singing in this wonderful hymn of worship and praise, O Come All Ye Faithful. Please stand. <laughs>
I ask you this time to take your pew Bibles and turn with me to Psalm 96. There are certain psalms that just seem to be so fitting for, for Advent, and, and even this one for this day of joy. So I'm going to ask you to read out loud with me from God's Word, uh, reading and also praying together Psalm 96 this morning. Let's read together. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. With this beautiful psalm in mind, let's go to God with our own prayers, with our own praise and worship. Lord, we do thank you for letting us come here today to worship you. The psalmist certainly realized that uh, there's a lot of reasons to, to pause and to, to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor. And I hope we recognize that as we gather here this morning as well. He encourages us to sing. And Lord, where there is joy, we, we tend to sing. And I pray that there will be the joy of the Lord in this place today in each heart. For we know that's what you want for us. You want us to experience that joy that the angels sing about so long ago. Lord, help us to, to realize we actually do come into your presence when we gather here for worship. Your word teaches us that where two or three gather in your name, that you are in the midst of them. The Christmas story reminds us that you are Emmanuel, God with us. You are here today. You're here today ready to meet us, to meet us in love to show us again your, your mercy, to bestow upon us again your forgiveness, to give us comfort where we need comfort, to give us strength where we need strength, to give us hope where we need hope. And I pray that by experiencing you here today, joy will well up and that it will be evident in our worship. It will be evident in the way that we live our lives in these coming days. Father, you are an awesome God. And nowhere was that made more clear than when you sent Jesus into this world so long ago. Thank you. Thank you so much for the gift of your son. And we thank you for your presence. And we thank you for the difference you have made in our lives and the difference you can make in our lives still yet and the difference you can make in the lives of those around us, the difference you can make in the world. We have prayed already the Lord's Prayer, praying that your will might be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. And that is our prayer, Lord for we know your will is best. Lord, as we gather here today, we, we recognize there are needs that, that we should address. We, we certainly pray for peace in this world of ours. We pray, Father, for those who, who, who suffer, for those who, who struggle. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray, Father, for those who have experienced grief and, and many, even within our own church family, have experienced great grief this past week. And we pray that your comfort would rest upon them, that your spirit would be, in fact, the comforter to them, and that we would too, that we will do what we can to reach out and, and minister to those who are hurting. Do pray for those who are sick, those who are struggling with their health. And, and, and that may be physical or it may be spiritual, but we pray for those who are in need now and having a difficult time that you would be with them too. And Lord, help us to be there as well. Thank you for always being there, for being here with us today. And I just again pray that you'd open our eyes wide so that we would recognize your presence, 
that we would sing, that we would rejoice, and, and that all of creation would join with us in offering you praise and glory. This I offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now join our voices together, and as the psalm says, sing to the Lord. Hymn number 100, Angels We Have Heard on High. Please stand. <clears throat> pray. Heavenly Father, we're re reminded of the story of the wise men who came and gave you gifts of gold, frankincense, and sense and myrrh, the gold to represent your sovereignty, frankincense to represent the sacrifice you were to make on the cross, and myrrh to represent the, your burial, because you had to conquer death before we could receive everlasting life. Father, we doubt that those were their only gifts. We doubt that it was everything they had, but it was their best. And Father, we pray today that we would give you our best in our time and our offerings. Now, we know that if we give our best, you will bless it. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you very much, choir. I ask all of you to turn in again in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, and uh, we will read chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. It is an old, old story, but it is a beautiful story, a story for us still yet today. Luke chapter 2, let's read together verses 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the preaching of his word today. There certainly is a lot of joy to be found in Luke's account of the Christmas story. To see it, you do have to look hard in some places. It's, it's almost like looking for Waldo in one of those Where's Waldo books. At other places, however, it's as obvious as it can be, as plain as the smile on Mona Lisa's face. This morning, I invite you to take a look with me at the first two chapters of Luke's Gospel. Let's see if we can't discover where the joy is. Luke begins his gospel with the mysterious announcement of John the Baptist's birth. We're told that Zechariah, an elderly priest, was chosen by lot to, to go to the temple in Jerusalem and to offer there a sacrifice of burned incense. As he was making this offering, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel informed Zechariah that, that God had heard his prayer. Now, we're not told explicitly what that prayer was, but it's pretty obvious that for years he and his wife Elizabeth had prayed for a child. For longer than they could remember, they had hoped to have a baby. The angel declared that that was about to happen. He said, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He didn't stop there, however. The angel went on to say, he will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Many years ago, C.S. Lewis wrote an autobiography and entitled it Surprised by Joy. If Zechariah and Elizabeth had chosen to write a memoir, they too might have chosen the same title. Despite their many years of praying for a child, they really weren't expecting to become parents at this particular stage in their lives. They were getting ready for retirement, not for Lamaze classes. Still, an incredible sense of joy came to them upon hearing the good news. The stigma they had lived with literally for decades for not having a child, that stigma was about to be removed. Elizabeth exclaimed, The Lord has done this for me. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. The coming of John the Baptist did indeed bring joy to Elizabeth and Zechariah. The same joy that, that most of you experienced when your firstborn came into the world. The angel, however, said that John's birth would be cause of rejoicing for many not just for his parents. And interestingly enough, Luke tells us later in verse 57 that, that when it came time for Elizabeth to give birth, her neighbors and, and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. It would appear that everyone was joyful at John's birth. Still, I can't help but believe that, that the angel implied more than, than just that, that his immediate family and friends would rejoice because of his birth. Surely the angel was, was looking down the, the line to that time when that little baby would be a voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. 
Joy and excitement would literally spread throughout the land when the forerunner began to proclaim that the long-awaited Messiah was about to come. People would rejoice, would be glad that John had come to prepare the way for the dawning of the new age. When John was born, his father, Zechariah, realized that something very special had occurred. Filled with joy himself, he began to sing. He sang, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Zechariah went on to include his little son in his song. Perhaps as a part of the lullaby, he sang, And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. It's no wonder. It's no wonder Elizabeth and Zechariah were filled with such joy. Not only were they finally going to have a child, but this child would be special indeed. What is a wonder, though, is something that occurred during the midst of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Elizabeth happened to have a cousin named Mary. This Mary, whom we'll talk more about in just a moment, was also pregnant. She, too, carried within her a special child, the very Son of God. While both were pregnant, Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, the, the baby leaped in her womb and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Luke says she exclaimed to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Elizabeth went on to describe to Mary how when she came into the room, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. That's what it says, leaped for joy. Now, how in the world she knew the prenatal John was leaping for joy, I have no idea. It would seem to be Luke's intention to convey the message that there is joy to be found in the presence of the Lord. Christ coming into the world was reason, was cause for joy. Jesus' own mother recognized this too. Luke tells us a story of how the angel Gabriel came to visit this young woman in Nazareth. He told her the startling news that though she be a virgin, she would give birth to a son, the Son of the Most High. And as you might suspect, this announcement stunned Mary. But her final words were, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. As already indicated, Mary eventually made her way to the home of her cousin, Elizabeth. And the words that Elizabeth spoke to her upon her arrival encouraged her. They, they confirmed what the angel had said. And this led Mary to, to begin singing as well a, a joyful song of praise. She said, my soul glorifies and magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. She went on to voice how his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. And I'm sure that Mary so did rejoice with the coming of Jesus. But it had to be hard on her. She was young and unmarried at the time. No doubt that the people in Nazareth talked about her behind her back. I'm sure some of the folks in town shunned her altogether. And other than Elizabeth, no one could possibly understand what she was going through. But none of this could rob Mary of her joy. The joy that came in being chosen among all women in the world, all women in history, to give birth to the Messiah. In chapter 2, Luke moves on to tell us of the actual birth of Jesus. Here we find Mary and Joseph in the, in the town of Bethlehem where they have been forced to, to go because of some crazy census this guy named Caesar Augustus decided needed to be taken. We know that it was crowded there. And we know that Jesus' birthplace was less than ideal. But that's really about all the information we are given about Jesus' birth. We are told, however, about what was going on nearby, out in the field surrounding Bethlehem. There were shepherds there, 
keeping watch over their flocks at night. Having tended their sheep all day, they were likely tired and ready for a good night's rest. But rest did not come. Instead, an angel did, declaring incredible news. Listen again to how Luke describes the scene. He said, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Did you catch what the angel said? He declared not just good news, but what? Good news of great joy. The birth of Christ the Lord was intended to bring joy to the world. That was God's plan. That was God's reason for, for sending his son so that, that people like the shepherds, so that people like you and I, so that, that humans everywhere might have joy. In so many ways, the world back then, just like the world today, was lacking in joy. What they needed and what we need came. And that humble child placed in the manger. He was and is the Savior of the world. The one who saves us from our sins. The, the one who saves us from ourselves. The, the one who, who saves us from a meaningless existence. The one who saves us from all hopelessness. Because there is a Savior, there is joy. The angels announced it. And the shepherds experienced it that first Christmas. The shepherds went to Bethlehem. And they found the child that the angel spoke of. Luke says when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about that child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Undoubtedly, the shepherds who visited the infant Jesus were filled with joy. So much so that, that they couldn't help but go out and, and start telling everyone they saw about the Savior's birth. They just had to do it. And, of course, that is the appropriate thing to do. They had the good news that, that would bring great joy to others. They weren't about to be selfish with that news. They wanted others to experience this joy, and others soon would. A few days later, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem so that they might present him to the Lord and, and offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law. While they were there, they encountered an elderly man named Simeon. Simeon is described as being righteous and devout, a person who was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Somewhere along the way, God had told Simeon that, that he would not die before he saw with his own two eyes the coming of the Messiah. That particular day, God led him to go to the temple and when Mary and Joseph entered carrying their little baby boy, he recognized Jesus for who he was. And he took him in his arms. And like Mary and like Zechariah before him, he began to sing. He praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. Simeon's wait was over. He had longed to see the day when, when God's deliverer would arrive, and that day had come. His dreams, his hopes were all fulfilled, and that baby boy he held in his arms. What joy must have filled that man's heart that day. And the same thing was true for another person present at the temple that day. Luke tells us there was a, a prophetess named Anna there. She was an elderly widow who, who never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. When Anna saw Mary, Joseph, and the infant Jesus, she too approached them and began to praise God. Luke says she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Here again, we can only begin to imagine the joy that must have flooded Anna's heart heart that day to have lived to see the, the coming of the Messiah like Simeon she had longed for that day and that day had come 
And like the shepherds, she couldn't keep the good news of great joy to herself. She had to spread the word. She had to tell others. And that just seems to be a common trait for all those who have come to know the joy of the Lord. Well, that concludes our journey through Luke's Christmas story. As I said at the beginning, there certainly is a lot of joy to be found in his account of Jesus coming and I can't help but believe that that was intentional on his part. I think Luke was wanting us to see that God intends for all of us, all of us to experience great joy and that this joy comes in Jesus. As I look around me, I sometimes have to stop and ask the question, where's the joy? I ask that as I look at the lives of other people. I ask that at times when I look at my own life. I, I know from my study of God's word that, that it is in fact God's desire for us all to have joy. Joy is even mentioned as being one of the fruit of the Spirit. It's supposed to be there in your life and in my life. But, but where's the joy? Wouldn't you agree with me that there seems to be a shortage of joy these days? Instead of being joyful, so many people we, we run into are miserable. The joy God intended for them just doesn't seem to be there. And, and this can be seen in the amount of complaining they do. It can be, be seen in how critical they, they are of others. It can be seen in the inordinate amount of anger in their lives. It can be seen in the way that their lives seem to be so focused on themselves, so focused on things. I think the Christmas story reminds us that joy is available for us all. But it will only be found in the most complete sense when we are focused on Jesus Christ. As we come to know and love him, our joy grows. And as that joy grows, along with those Luke wrote about, we, we can't help but want to worship and praise God. We can't help but want to spread the good news of great joy to others and tell people about Jesus. So where's the joy? It's not where a lot of people seem to think. The story of Christmas reveals that both for now and forevermore, it is found in Jesus. Would you pray with me? Lord, we sing joy to the world. We hear countless songs, and we've even sung them today that talk about joy. But I think a lot of us still have to ask the question, where's the joy? It seems to be missing in a lot of our lives. But that's not your fault and certainly not your desire. You want us all to have joy. A joy unspeakable, a joy indescribable. And it's, it's, it's available, we can have it. But only if we'll remember to focus on Jesus. And Lord, we confess that maybe that's why we're not as joyful as we should be is our focus tends to be elsewhere. Sometimes it's too much on ourselves. Sometimes it's maybe too much on our families, our jobs, our hobbies. Lord, help us to get things right. Help us to get our focus where it should be. Help us to keep looking to the one you sent to Bethlehem long ago. And I pray that as we focus there, that you will restore to us the joy of our salvation. That that joy will grow stronger, will be seen in the way we worship, will be seen in the way we live our lives and the way that we share the good news with others. Lord, if there's anyone here, anyone listening at home who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, help them to realize they'll never have complete joy, not the joy that you intend, until they make a surrender of their lives to you. And I pray that this would be the day of salvation for them, that they would accept the one who came to Bethlehem long ago into their hearts here today. Lord, please give us joy. Joy that others will see. Joy that will attract others so that we can point them to your son. That I pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. And I'll let you respond any way God might lead you. You might want to come today accepting Christ as Savior and Lord. If you've never done that, 
I want to encourage you to do it now. Nothing would make this Christmas more special than for you to make the Christ of Christmas your Savior and Lord. There may be the need for some to, to make a new commitment to this Christ who came. There may be some who say, I just, you know, I like the joy that you spoke of and I want to have it pray for me. You may want to come join our church. You may be feeling led to, to make some decision, some commitment, some, some calling in your life. I, I don't know how God's speaking to you, but I hope there's joy and I hope as we sing you'll listen for his voice and if you feel God leading you to come, I'll be here to greet you. Please stand with me and let's sing together. Thank you so much for your presence and those of you who've been watching by television thank you for tuning in today i'll remind you there are no evening services here tonight uh, i hope the rest of your day goes well and that uh, the rest of your advent season does as well that it will be a time of great joy for each and every one of you our choir will close us with our choral benediction mm -hmm.